like the USB port, right? USB universal serial bus. This connection port has replaced just about everything else that we've talked about, okay? The devices that we said we plug into the serial port, well, first of all, most of those devices we just don't use anyway, um, but if we did, they would plug in probably via USB. How about printers? I mean, yeah, I know a lot of printers are networked now, but if they're not networked, then, you know, maybe they're plugged directly into the computer. How? Oh, yeah, with a USB port. <laughs> you know, and then the keyboards, mice, I've already been talking about that all along. So, yeah, USB ports are now, you know, the standard connection port for just about everything. Now, USB has three different standards. There's USB 1, USB 2, and USB 3. And USB 1 had a maximum speed, right? So the data, how fast we can transmit data back and forth, a maximum speed of 12 megabits per second. USB 2 could then do, and, and this was a big deal at the time, could do 480 megabits per second. Okay, and the reason I say it's a big deal is because before then, we had this thing called FireWire, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. And FireWire was considered to be the super fast, the lightning fast, because it could do hundreds of megabits per second. And USB was a lowly old 12 megabits per second. But even that 480 megabits per second has become inadequate, right? We always want things faster and faster. We want it now. So USB 3 can now do up to 5 gigabits per second of maximum transmission speed. And I will tell you, I have external hard disk devices, <laughs> okay, so uh, external storage devices that I plug in via USB 3.0 and use them as like my main storage device, meaning it's no longer a situation where, well, that's just my archive stuff out on, on my external drive. No, I can actually use that external drive for real-time stuff, even if there's a program that's actively using the data that's on that drive. Now, you need to be familiar with the various ports. And so USB type A looks like this. And this is the type of port that you would see typically on the computer itself. And a type B port would look like this, where it's a little bit more squared off. And this is the type of port you would see on maybe a printer. Okay, certain other devices would have the type B. Okay, so the type A is typically on the computer side. Type B is on the device side. But then we get into the mini A and the mini B, which you can see is a smaller version. And then we even get into the micro AB and the micro B. Okay, so this is what the various ports look like. And you will find some of these minis and micros out on different devices. Uh, external storage devices I was just talking about very often will have a mini connector. Certain cell phones used to have and even today might still have the mini B connector on it, whereas now they'll have the micro B, most of these external devices, especially things like cell phones and stuff like that. Now, one other thing that I'd like to tell you about USB that you should know uh, is that USB actually has the capability, uh, a single USB controller can handle up to 127 devices. Okay, now you might be thinking to yourself, how the heck am I going to do that? Well, this is done by connecting sometimes a USB hub, or you can even daisy chain certain USB devices. Okay, so even though I will tell you, <laughs> one controller can handle up to 127 devices, there's a couple things I want you to keep in mind. One is that you're only going to get a certain amount of performance you know, within the uh, the specifications that I've already listed, okay? So as far as the speeds and whatnot, all 127 devices aren't going to get, you know, 480 megabits of the throughput, okay? It's just not going to happen. You know, they're going to share that, okay? So understand that you have some performance issues when you hook up too many USB devices to a single controller. The second thing I want you to know is that although USB is a technology that does allow for certain smaller devices to be powered through the USB controller. You can't have more than two devices 
that are powered on that controller. Because again, there's only so there's a very small amount of power they're going through there. Uh, so you can't have more than two devices without using some form of external power source. Now I will tell you there are certain USB hubs that I've seen where the USB hub itself has its own power source. Okay, so you take the hub and you plug it into the wall, and then it is able to power multiple, you know, beyond the two devices. Okay, but the original controller cannot. 